What's up everybody, this is Tyler Stephen 200 of Spinning News, and today I'm going to be doing a little tour of the basement of, uh, what's the name? Uh, this is going to be a tour of the basement of summer, or not really summer yet, but spring 2016. So I'm going to go over some of the stuff that I'm doing. Now, spring is usually the time where I clean up the basement, and I'm not going to lie with you, I started cleaning yesterday. I'm not going to finish cleaning it today because I've got to, uh, fi I, I usually finish it when my grandma's not home. Is that way I can get a little bit more productive productivity done. I'm going to start off very basic. Let's start off on the entrance here. This is the uh, exit, as you can see by the exit sign. I actually made this. This thing has been here for God knows how long and it's still working. I don't think the battery holds a charge anymore, though. Oh, yeah, the battery's dead in it. That was a design flaw with these exit signs I made. There was a battery cell right there. And the battery cell was not intended for uh, that kind of charge. So after a while, it dies out. So that was kind of an issue that I came across when I made these things, and honestly, I'm not going to fix it. There's no point to. And then here, by the door right here, the door with the really cheap glass panes, I've got a switch that goes to the, the light over there, which is broken. It used to work, but um, the frame that mounted the light, as you can see, it's cross -wide. I had it mounted a certain way, and it broke, and um, the light, I had to pull the light bulb out of it. <laughs> So that's why the switch doesn't do anything technically, and there's no power supply for it. I put this curtain here because there was originally a wall over here way back in the day, and we had a flood. So basically, everything over here was taken out. So I just put a curtain here because um, I want to separate this room from the basement pretty bad. I don't want anything coming over here. I put up curtains over here too. There's the massive boiler tank. It's ridiculously how huge that thing is. And I use this area for storage. You can see I've got some boxes down there and stuff. Not really too much. Uh, sometimes I will store computers down here. I just don't normally do it because it gets really dirty. And right there is the air assist foam modem that we use. It also has a battery in it. And uh, that way if we ever have a power outage like I just demonstrated, it'll uh, kick in the battery. Come on. And see. And you can still make calls. This phone was a special needs phone that had a headset. And basically with the headset you could just pick it up and stuff. But the headset actually broke on it. I don't remember what broke, but I think it was the port in there that broke. So I hot glued it down. And um, it still works, you just gotta use the speaker. It's funny because this actually strobes when it, someone's calling you. The sub breaker box for the, um, for the stuff down there, which I'm not gonna be touching. And I, like I said, I was cleaning up the basement, so I started sweeping. Uh, big room's pretty much done. I just got to pick up the pile. Or not really the big room, the multimedia lab. But I just got to show you some interesting stuff I got going on. Also, I have my PVs down here. My PV uh, 115Hs down here so I could listen and jam out to music while I was uh, cleaning. And here it's the multimedia lab. Let me get some light in here. Oh, that's really bright. Anyhow, in here I just got some... Uh, I've just got some networking equipment that goes to the whole house. Starting off all the way over here, we've got my modems, which is right here is my D-Link router, the uh, Motorola Circboard modem, D-Link router, the Netgear router, which this is the wireless AP. This has wireless networking capabilities, but it's not being used. I'm only using it so for port forwarding and um, the DHCP ser service is not even being used on it. It's only being used for port forwarding and support triggering as well as um, as well as basically just handling very basic functions nothing of the sort of DHCP that guy down there does DHCP the DNS functions not this thing does nothing the only thing it does is port forward port triggering and uh, that's pretty much it it does nothing else this is our main router this thing right here is a 5 gigahertz and 2 gigahertz Netgear router this is this handles the network the wireless 
This used to be a wireless AP to extend the range, and I actually have a wire right here that goes to the antenna on the roof. Or actually, no, I don't. This is not hooked up, but I had a uh, thing that went to the wireless antenna on the roof, and I basically I transmitted it, it, it. The router works great, I just don't use it anymore. I guess I can just take this out, you know, put that in storage. Um, below I got my Cisco cable box. This goes to a lot of TVs in the house. I've still got to hook up more TVs to this thing, but currently it's got about four or five TVs hooked up to it. So, you know, basically that. And below it I've got my hub stack. Hub. You guys remember hubs. Oh, yeah. Of course, my Handycam doesn't want to focus. Hubs are not like switches. Uh, it is basically a switch, but instead of, uh... I don't really know how to explain it. It's basically a switch, just a lot slower. <laughs> so, uh, these things... The, the whole factor of this thing being 100 megabits out of the question. <laughs> it's about 10 megabit, or... 10 to 50 megabit in between there. I've noticed the maximum speed I've maybe gotten out of this thing was probably about 70 megabits. So it's not a bad switch. It's obviously not the greatest, but it was free. And it had some issues, and I uh, noticed that the issues were actually because of the RAM slots on it. Because this thing does use an Intel um, 386, I believe it's a 386, some sort of 386 chipset. I'm, I don't know if it's a 386, it's just some sort of Pentium in there. It's a very low-end Pentium. And um, it does have a CPU, and there has a, there's like a little 8 meg uh, thing of RAM, and the RAM chip was actually very dirty, so I cleaned out the RAM chip and the slots, and it worked fine after that. I did all sorts of things to try to fix it, and then I just did one thing after it was the RAM. And ever since then, it's been running straight beautifully. You know, the school... The school could have kept this thing, and the grasshopper sounds you were hearing is not a grasshopper, it's that computer right there, and I'll explain why it's doing that. It's something I need to fix, but I'm just too lazy to. <laughs> Anyhow, it's mounted on these boxes here, but that's another story I'll save for you another time. And all those cables right there running up to the ceiling are all Cat 5s and uh, coax, and these are all power running up to there, and that power strip was mounted on the ceiling, but it broke. There's a speaker right here that's part of the PA system, and the really ghetto PA amplifier. And, uh, hate that fan. Anyhow, so that's that. So over here we got my Dell Optiplex GX, or not really a GX, it's a Dell Optiplex 745. This is the file server, domain controller, uh, host machine for Minecraft. It's a DHCP server, DNS server. It's pretty much an everything server. And, uh... It, it handles a lot of what I need to do beautifully. I've never had a problem with it. It used to have original specs where 3 gigabytes of RAM, a core 2 dual clocked at 1.80 or 183 gigahertz. A, uh, and it used to have Windows XP on it. And uh, I used this machine for a while. I hosted some Minecraft servers off of it on Ubuntu for someone that I'm not disclosing their name for. Uh, I bet he'd be cool with me saying it. Uh, World 1-5, which is New Age Server Alarms Minecraft server. I used to host it off here, but that's when I only, but that's when I had 4 gigs of RAM and a Core 2 Dual, so I didn't handle it so nicely. I upgraded the, uh, the processor to a Core 2 Quad Q6600, which is the max that this machine can handle processor-wise, and I upgraded the RAM to the maximum amount of 8 gigabytes of, uh, 666 megahertz. Yeah, that's right. I just said the devil's number, and that's actually the clock speed for the RAM. And, um, and I also maxed the, um, so that's the maximum amount of RAM as I put 8 gigs in there. And it has about maybe like 5 hard drives in it. Or 4. As you can see, it's running Windows Server 2008 or 2, because 2008 is a kick ass server operating system that I cannot get enough of. I really like this. Uh, I'm not going to log in here. Hold on. Actually, well, screw it. I can log in. I'll put my camera down. Now we're logged in here. I th yeah, I was remotely connected to it from upstairs. Now, you might be wondering, well, what's the choice with the monitor here? Why do you have, like, this really crappy POS monitor? Well, normally, I don't use the monitor for this machine. I connect to it remotely using Windows uh, Desktop Remote Desktop Connecting thing. So, uh, as you can also see, the resolution is really low, and that's mainly to conserve power, because the CRT monitors, the higher resolution you drive on them, they, uh, they eat a lot of power. And not only that, but the graphics chip on here is an Intel GMA chip, so, lower the resolution, better performance, why not, right? And, uh, 
like I said, this thing is a DHCP server. Go over here to DHCP. Go ahead and look at the scope I have programmed down here. Address pool. Oh, hold on. Address leases. These are all the computers in my network that are leased addresses and all the devices, matter of fact. There is quite a bit of uh, devices on my network right now. And those are all the currently valid ones that are currently with valid addresses. Of course, I've got an Active Directory user computers. I'll show that another time. I'll save that for another video. I'm going to go ahead and lock it and shut off the monitor. And of course, i got the main printer for downstairs, this uh, Dell Worker printer. It is connected. It's a Dell Worker printer M5200. Really industrial printer. This thing will spew out papers like nothing. And it's getting a little bit low in toner, so I might have to get some new toner soon. But I just love this printer. I can't get enough of it. It does. There are color cartridges for it, but the color cartridges are about like 200 bucks. <laughs> and although these are, this is an industrial printer. This is made for like uh, schools and not even doctors' offices. Something more robust than doctors' offices. And this thing is just killer. It used to be a part of the Yukon thing, and uh, long story that. Oh, that's gotta warm itself up. You can see the light was flickering there. That's how much power this thing drains. So. I have it on a pretty short delay of power saver. I'll shut off the light. And I got my PV speakers in here. Now, the boiler room. This is a good video. Well, the panel was in pieces, no doubt. <laughs> it really showed you what the uh, inside of the, of the IA controller looks like on these. This is what it looks like. I actually had to make some modifications because I was trying to fix the, um, the silencing issue, but I actually am not going to be using this anymore. I might do like a finale with it and a system test, and then I'm not going to use it anymore. And the reason why is because um, I may or may not be buying a panel off of a firearm enthusiast, a panel that you will recognize, no doubt. But it's not confirmed yet. Um, I have to talk to some people about it, and I've got to pay one person, and then it's got to be shipped to somewhere to get it fixed. I, I'm debating whether... I, I do want to get it, and I'm just debating if I really should put the money into it, and lately money's been a little bit tight. So I'm just going to go ahead and save up some money. I might just sell some computers to get it, to be honest with you. I don't really have a strong purpose of it. So, um, yeah, that's a little bit of that. So uh, I thought you guys might find that kind of interesting. So this panel is taken apart right now. If you ever wanted to see what the inside of it looks like, it is not a uh, very clean panel. <laughs> I was going to rebuild this thing for a fifth time, but then I said, you know what? I don't think I will. I, I don't think I will. And I've got some modifications to the NAX here. That's something that I'll get into another time. I've still got the uh, the Wheelock MIZ out here and the NS upstairs. Those have not changed. Pretty much none of the notification appliances have changed. So, going into my office, which is where I usually get computer work done for people. I've got an eMac, an eMac G4, 700 megahertz. This is just to play vintage kids games. That's all I do with it. Uh, doesn't really have a use more than that. It works just fine, you know. I've also got some vintage programs on it called Clicker. Although I did something to the uh, QuickTime uh, file and I fucked up the um, <laughs> bit of the operating system. There's, you know, it isn't even Unix, as a matter of fact, so, oh well. Anyhow, so this is basically what I play games on. Like, I have a huge collection of vintage uh, kids' games. Another one of those phones you saw. Uh, some of my Vezel collection, this is actually a screen that I pulled off of my 8th grade laptop. I had all my friends sign at the end of 8th grade. A lot of the names have faded, but, uh, the burn screen, the burnt marks are actually because someone put a soldering iron on my laptop in school, and I was pretty pissed about that. And just some Dell, uh, just some Vezels. I have more of them I have to hang up. I took them down. Bunch of computer mouses. Uh, my main work computer, this is what I use when I work for people, or when I do remote uh, desktop work for people, and I help fix up people's computers and speed them up. This is the computer I use. Mainly, I get a lot of work done on here. And it works fine for what I use it for, you know, there's nothing really great. I get a little headset so I can talk to people over Skype. A little dollop to punch GX280. Uh, Pretty powerful machine you can put the, all of the upgrades I put into it. There was a clock right up here, but that doesn't work. This worked fine for a while, and then the uh, whole motor seized up because it needed oil, and I did, didn't even realize it needed oil. What are you going to do? That's a TV down there that uh, 
It works, I just, I have to relocate it. It was over here so I could screw around with it and whatnot. Uh, just some panels and some firearm stuff I've made and stuff. I've got more of the stuff, it's just scattered everywhere. I'll make another video on that sometime. And the uh, computer storage room. Now this room is no doubt a mess. And uh, let me turn the, the knife shot function on here because that light takes forever to turn on. But I've got uh, some older computers here. I've got a Power Mac G4, two Precision 670s. I have two, three of those. One being my main computer. There's the motherboard that I took out of my original Precision. The one I, my main one, because I did a motherboard upgrade. And that's the uh, motherboard for it. Oh, I forgot about this. This is an awesome a camera. It is a compact VHS, so it's not the best camera. But the, um, the board, the, the, I don't even know if this thing has enough power. Let's see. Come on. I guess not. Oh. Okay, I know why it wasn't working. Look how bright that light is. That's ridiculously bright. See? This camera's pretty cool. I don't really do anything with it, mainly for the fact that I got a DVD player. There's some more computers underneath there. The Alpha Box, the original Alpha Box, does seem to remember that. Uh, I just kicked a computer. Power supply for Adult Precision. There are a bunch of keyboards over there. I don't know, this this place is a mess. I've got some stuff in storage in here. The collection of computers I have was extremely increased last year. I, uh, so last year when I spring cleaned, took a lot of that inventory out. I'm very thankful I did. I've got some computer mice in there, some man manuals for my Apple II, some computer RAM and processors. Uh, down here I've got some hard drives and uh, disk drives. Just stuff that I kept that actually does work. Oh, great. That's fun. That drawer doesn't really go in there too well. Let me sit down here. Uh, HDMI and VGA adapters. I got a shit ton of those. Uh, sound cards, Ethernet cards. Pretty much just standard legacy port cards. I even got a capture card in here. Then down here, I've just got graphics cards galore. <laughs> I think some people might flip out at me for this. Uh, I've got some decent cards, like this uh, MSI NX8600, or it's at least semi-decent. It's not that new. Quadra FX 4500. This one's pretty badly damaged. Oh, my battery's about to die. How fun. And uh, another Quadro. And I got a bunch of these uh, uh, AMD Rage cards. I have a lot of those. Yeah, I mean a lot. I don't know why my battery's about to die. I just charged the damn thing. I guess I'll make this a little bit quicker. Hope so. I turn off night shot. Yeah, night shot was killing it. Uh, good thing I turned that off. Now, I have the thermostat, which doesn't even work because we cut the wire for it. And this place is messy. And I do excuse this. I'm going to clean this place up like crazy. Just got a bunch of uh, crap on the floor here, dryer lint and stuff. Got a little TV up in here, so I can basically, when I'm taking a thumper dumper, go ahead and watch some TV because why the hell not, right? Ah, uh, switch and whatnot. In here, the multimedia lab. I know some people have been dying to see this room. I don't really have anything too uh, interesting in here. Uh, this, the multimedia lab, is a pretty much a, or its, it's code name, the big room. Has been used for many things over the years. It was a, a racetrack at one time. It was a pool room. It was a ping pong room. It was a den. It was uh, all sorts of things. It was used. It was a home theater at one time, which you guys saw that not too long ago. It was a lot of things, and uh, it did pretty well at that. And there's the other PV speaker, and there's the uh, amplifier for it. It was rocking out the other day, so these things are pretty beefy. You got a 15-inch woofer and a little dual tweeter. I was eating down here, so that's why I have that there, so don't comment on it. Drop down power plug because I do a lot of stuff, and having this here is a nice thing. The uh, cooler, or not really a cooler, it was a freezer, but it doesn't work anymore, so we just store Christmas decorations in it. A bunch of crap piled up there. Demonstration board, which I have to get back in order. Some chairs. The baseboard heating, which is just all destroyed. I have to work on buffing those out. I sealed up the window here, and uh, mainly because that's broken, the whole pane right there is broken, 
And that's also cracked because of my stupidity. Anyhow, um, this window leaks a lot of air because, if, I don't know if you can see it, but down there, that's all rotting away right there. So this window needs to be replaced bad. It's actually because of the gutter, but uh, I have it sealed off pretty nicely, as you can tell. So, helps. It definitely does help, I will say that. And I'm still cleaning up in here, so do excuse the mess. Right here, I've got the computer lab, or well, some of half a computer lab, I guess you could say. I've All these machines work, except for this one. Uh, this did work, and then I tried powering it up after like a, a month of it sitting plugged in. And it, you turn it on, it turned off. You think it's a power supply issue, I looked into putting a new power supply into it. I got a new power supply, put it in here. Still did the same thing. So I tried doing heavy troubleshooting. I removed the CPU and turned it on, and it... It basically did the yellow light of death, but it did come on. So I'm thinking that it might have been the CPU because, uh, or something relating to uh, the processing system in it. And there's the heatsink for it over there. So basically that computer does work. I just need to get a new CPU for it. These computers work just fine. These uh, Optiplex GX270s. Uh, lock screen. Oh, this one's on. Oh, I, I was using this the other day. I'd even use these myself when I'm down here sometimes. Uh, they get the work done pretty good. Nothing extremely powerful, but they do work. Let me log off. They are running Windows 7. I bet a lot of people didn't know you could run Windows 7 on these. But they are capable of running Windows 7 just fine. Well, like I said, this one needs a, um, a new CPU. And then down there, I've got an HP DeskJet 940C. I actually have like three of these. Uh, two of them that, were, that are at the high school. And my battery's about to die again. But anyhow, um, I basically use these to print photos and stuff, and although they're old printers, they do that just fine. Okay, yeah, I've got a plug-in pretty soon. I don't think I have anything else left to explain. Other than that, the basement's looking kind of sketchy. Oh, I've, e I've got the exit signs, of course. You all know and love these things. That I actually had to change the bulbs out of this one, if you're wondering. The bulbs in this one blew out. We had a power search. And I'm pretty sure the battery in this one's dead, too. Ah, what a surprise it is. Fun. I really didn't think things over when I put those batteries in there. I didn't realize they would, uh... Actually, it's disconnected. What the frick? Hey, it's not even connected to the battery. I don't know why that's like that. I gotta fix that. And the emergency light down over there. That still works. That's... I have not tested that in forever, so... Let's see if it works, shall we? You know? You don't know unless you try. Oh, wow, it does. And it's got full power, too. That's nice. This thing has come in handy once, actually. We lost power during a heavy storm, and I was down here watching a movie, and that's been there since we had, even when we had the projector in here and stuff. I was watching a movie on the uh, projector on this wall over here, and the power went out. Uh, it was a dark night, and that thing came on, and I'm just like, yes, it worked. So that was kind of something nice, because, you know, when it dies... When the power goes out, you know, you have it. It's got a crack in it, though, that was uh, kind of an accident. Or I wouldn't say an accident. I was just throwing stuff at the projector, and it, like, boop, hit it, and it cracked it right there. But other than that, it works just, like, brand new. It's a really nice thing to have, actually. It works fine. I haven't had to replace the battery in it yet. So when the time comes, I know how to replace the battery. But the one up in the living room died. Um, something went wrong with the relay, and it fried the relay. So I need to get that one fixed, and I'm going to have to order parts from um, an online dealer because obviously Radio Shack's no longer opened. Yeah, I don't have anything other than that, so uh, thanks for watching, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.